They call me Tricky Ricky and uh, trying to get back to that dream. Tyree Ricardo Davis, born September 23rd, 1979. Today's feature is a guy that, depend on who you hear it from, will either be remembered for saying and doing boneheaded things on and off the court, or a player that was really on the cusp of becoming an all-star in the league if this or that happened and is routinely misunderstood. Ricky Davis was one of my favorite players to watch back in the day for full disclaimer. Yes, he did and said some things that didn't paint him in the best light, but at the time, you have to understand that a lot of things that were acceptable to do and say back then will get you canceled, fired, and traded in today's society. When Ricky Davis said in an interview that he thought LeBron James was just going to be another addition to help him score prior to LeBron entering the league, it was taken out of context and reported like he was saying LeBron was going to be a side act to his leading role show, when in actuality what he meant was that he welcomed the addition of a player like LeBron who could garner enough attention that defenses couldn't focus on him and also that LeBron was a skilled playmaker and passer, so things would only be easier for him to do his job, which at the time was to score. Let's not forget that Ricky Davis was a 25-5 guy for the Cavaliers before LeBron got there in just his second year with the team after averaging 11 points a game the season before. Had the team won more games, Ricky Davis just may have been an all-star that season. Of course, the Cavs weren't even close to showcasing Davis as an all-star, tied for the worst team in the league with the Denver Nuggets, both winning just 17 games on the season. Also in Cleveland is where some of Davis's most self-showcasing came, like him attempting to give himself a triple-double by shooting on the wrong hoop and missing on purpose in order to get his 10th rebound or him preening himself too often for some whenever he'd make self-serving plays on the court even when his team was down big and had no chance to win the game. But one thing's for certain, Ricky Davis was ultra-talented and had all the tools to be a great player and wasn't. He was great size at 6'7", 200 pounds, had a 42-inch vertical at his peak, could shoot the deep ball off screens or off the dribble, defend when he wanted to, and had the attitude to compete as well as showcase. Whatever it is, Ricky had it, but for some reason, the feeling on him universally is all those things never really came together at the right time to see him reach his full potential. Was Ricky Davis misunderstood, and that's why at 30 years old he was out the league, or was he wasted talent that could never get out of his own way? What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to Swerving Hondas for this request. It's your boy JC Stunnick Growth. Let's get him. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Ricky Davis was a 6'7 shooting guard small forward from Las Vegas, Nevada that moved to Iowa at a young age where before long he became a parade All-American fourth team as a senior and earned first team All-State honors in Class 4A both his senior and junior years and first team All-Conference every season since his sophomore year. He averaged 25 points and 12 rebounds his senior year, still he was underrated leaving high school to some, likely because he had already committed to Iowa since his sophomore season, leaving no hype surrounding his name, but the talent was always there. Iowa coach Tom Davis said he loved Ricky's energy on the court and his confidence, but mostly to them it was clear his talent could take him all the way if he could put it all together but no one expected he'd leave Iowa after just one season for the league, which he did, becoming the 21st overall pick by the Charlotte Hornets. Stunt number one, play style not leading to wins. Like mentioned, Ricky Davis was a really good player whose talent was there, star it factor was there, but the way he played and showboated created an aura of a selfish basketball player only concerned with getting his at all costs. His quote about LeBron coming in to help him score the ball can be pinned right here as the best example of that. Instead of saying how much the team could benefit having another guy that can score, play make, and make high IQ decisions could help the team, his mindset was solely focused on him getting his 20 points a game. 
What he didn't seem to understand is that none of that mattered if the team didn't win games. Ask Trey Young, who's usually left off all-star teams because his teams remain playing 500 or below basketball. In his career year 0203, where he averaged over 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists, Davis took over 18 shots a game just to get 20 points a night, all while playing 39 minutes per game. Only 11 players played more minutes per game than Davis that season, and they were all all-stars except Catino Mobley and Jalen Rose. Ricky was a confident player, but his play could easily be seen as selfish or not the winning plays to anyone with eyes, creating the misunderstanding that he was a selfish player. I don't think Ricky was one, but I do think the way he played and the historical facts we have didn't add to his team's winning more games. All made worse by his showboating at all costs and dramatic attempts to pad his stats. It was all flair for Ricky Davis throughout his 20s, like with the Celtics when he missed an in-game between the legs dunk, got the rebound, and attempted a windmill with the player trailing close behind. He made the dunk, but both attempts still left you confused how obvious Davis made it that before anything, he cared about how things looked and not being smart about reserving that energy, getting back on defense, and creating more opportunities. Everyone knew Ricky was out there trying to score the ball first, second, and third, and these kind of players influenced their teammates to think like that as well, leaving everyone out there attempting to get their own which is why most of the teams he's been on were bad teams. He's played in the playoffs twice in his 12-year career, both in Boston, both first-round eliminations. Stunt number two, LeBron joining the Cavs. This right here could have been the first growth stunt for Ricky Davis, but here we are. When LeBron was leaving high school, three things were clear whether you liked the hype surrounding him or not. He was entering the NBA draft straight out of high school, no question. He was going to be the number one pick, and he was going to be the successor to whatever went on in the 90s. The chosen one, because regardless, the NBA needed a LeBron at the time and were going to give him every opportunity to become the face of the league. The only people in the world that didn't understand this were the players on the Cavaliers, mainly Carlos Boozer, Darius Miles, and Ricky Davis. Those players were interviewed right before the NBA draft lottery and the hate dripped from their faces knowing they could get the number one pick and end up with the most hype prospect of all time. They hated it and didn't want LeBron on the team uprooting their shine as young players still establishing themselves in the league. Davis actually said good things about LeBron, unlike Boozer who said that the team had better players than LeBron already, which they did not, or Darius Miles, a high school to pro player himself that did the most hating, saying he didn't think you could bring a high school player in and think the team will turn around. The Cavaliers did just that behind LeBron going to the finals in just his fourth year. By then, Miles was traded and on his way to being one of the biggest busts and NBA disappointments of all time. Ricky Davis was improving from the year he had before in Cleveland by 9 points more, with more rebounds, more steals, and shooting better, and may have made an all-star if he could play with LeBron and embrace being a number two option, seeing as the Cavs sorely needed one to stay with LeBron, except Ricky forced his way out, saying he was tired of losing all the time, when in actuality, he and Miles probably still thought too highly of themselves at the time and were afraid LeBron would steal their shine. Well, LeBron did anyway, and Davis was off to Boston where he never made it out the first round and the Celtics declined. He never did much winning since. Stunt number three, his athleticism declined. Lastly, Ricky Davis was out the league so soon, in the beginning of when players should usually be in their prime, because he wasn't the same player athletically as he was before, and with a guy with the locker room energy of a me guy, when that happens, teams can't wait to get rid of you. Once you aren't jumping over guys any longer, or have improved your shot to be deadly from deep a la Vince Carter, there really isn't much difference from you and the younger you floating around the league or somewhere in the draft. 
At 26, 27 years old, Ricky Davis was close to his career numbers, but soon after fell off a cliff with the Clippers from 08 to 2010, who eventually waived him to make room for Steve Blake and Travis Outlaw. Two players he was better than, but who had specific skills to help a team other than a subpar scorer, which by then Ricky wasn't even that. He was also plagued by a patella injury that was misdiagnosed and took a lot from his overall game. He averaged career lows until his departure from the team and wasn't picked up by another. He attempted to claw his way back through the D-League and overseas, but to no avail as obviously he wasn't the high flyer who could help on both ends any longer. All in all, I do think Ricky Davis was misunderstood. Around the league, he was solid, but teams knew they could only get the best out of him when he was doing one or two things, scoring or filling the seats with his athleticism. If not, there really was no need to keep him around and that's what happened after he couldn't be himself at high levels any longer. Many think he was a bad guy or poor teammate, but he wasn't. Like I said, he was one of the only embracing LeBron before he joined the Cavaliers, but because of his me first showboating, shoot every touch and patting himself on the butt, he can be seen in a negative light and for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth and I'm out.